In this video, we will use any suitable Linux architecture and with the help of Kema user, we will assemble and execute for ARM64. We are creating a simple bash script. We write the header for bash, assuming Kema user is already installed, see video 1. We use Arch64 Linux GNU as to assemble, followed by the desired file name. The option O is for the output, using $1.0. Remember to use $1 for the specified received argument. Then, for linking, we use Arch64 Linux GNU LD. Then $1.0 for the object file, then O and $1 for the expected output executable. To execute, we use the command Kema Arch64. We type dot slash dollar one to indicate the executable file, then a semicolon, the echo command, then the dollar and question mark symbols. Then to remove the generated files, we use the rm command followed by dollar one dot o for the object and dollar one for the created executable file. To solve example 10, we write the global directive, the start label, the data section, and we create two variables a and b with their respective default values. Then, the text section, the start label, and we load the memory address of variable a into register x1, then we load the corresponding address of b into register x2. Now we load the content of variable a into register x3 via its address, using the same exact instruction for the content of b, loading it into register x3. Having both values, we place the value of b into the address of a VR a store instruction. We load the least significant byte and we exit the current program. We use the script as ldec with the name 10 underscore str64 to execute. And as we can see, it prints the expected value 255. To solve example 11, we write the complete initial code. In x0, we place the correct code for stdout, which is 1. Then we load the precise address of the message string. Into register x2, we must place the required size of the message, which is 14 bytes. In register x8, we place the corresponding value 64, the code for writing. It is advisable to leave the default value 0 in register x0 as the return value. This indicates that everything proceeded very smoothly correctly. Then the exit code. Below, we place the necessary data section with the variable msg and the string to be printed. Note that if placed below, it is not necessary to specify text above. When executed, we see the printed message and a zero. We copy the script to remove the unwanted echo and now we execute it with SLD and see it only printed the message. To solve example 12, I have the code prepared to explain it in detail thoroughly. It is separated into parts. The first part prints an initial prompt message. The second part is for requesting the user to input a message directly from the keyboard. The third part prints the message received in the buffer. The buffer has a size of 16 bytes allocated. Going into detail, the first line of each part is the code for output and input, respectively. In the first part, we print the message enter a text clearly. We use syscall code 64 in register x8 to indicate a write to the screen operation. In the second part, we use code 0 to indicate standard input, the keyboard device. We use the buffer and specify the size, which is 16 bytes. Note that for printing to the screen we use code 64, and for reading from the keyboard we use code 63 consistently, as can be observed here. Code 64 in the first part and 63 in the second part, but the code structure is similar overall. Then the fourth part is for return and exit. Note that we write the data section below again to avoid writing text above accidentally. Then we execute the script as LD and it will ask for the text. We purposely write a message longer than 16 bytes maximum. This causes the message to be split, and it even triggers an error in the terminal later. The buffer was filled and the remainder stays in the keyboard input temporarily, and with the enter key, it causes an error. We run it again with a suitable message. Now it prints correctly. If we wish to change the size of the requested message, we must place a larger value for the size of the input buffer directly.
To solve example 13, we declare a pointer type variable which will be used to address the new memory address requested carefully from the break call. The first part invokes the break command, the second part associates the pointer, the third requests memory, and the fourth handles the pointer logic. The fifth part loads the value, returns it and exits. In detail, in the first instruction we use code 214, the invocation for break operations. It is advisable to have the list of codes, for example on this website reference. We select Arch64, and we can see the codes and associated command descriptions. Among them, open at and close for files, read and write in general, and also exit functions. Then we continue scrolling down the site to see more syscall numbers. In the higher numbers, we can find code 214, which is the break command, also a link to the MAN page for command information details. There we will find information about arguments and operating system operations documented. We return to the program and use x equal with a value of ic or null. This returns the last data address available. Then we load the pointer and in its content we store the address returned by the break system call command. To that address we then add 4 bytes carefully and we execute break again, but now with the pointer and the incremented address to request that memory. Then we can now access that memory address and we store the value 100 in it successfully. Now the pointer serves us to address the new memory location. We load the contained value from the new address, we return it, and we exit gracefully. Then we execute the program, and it must print the value 100. To solve example 14, we create the program with nano, and we edit it carefully. As usual, we write the global directive and the start labels properly. We use the immediate value and we place it in register x with the MOV instruction correctly. Then we are going to add register x with the immediate value 100. For this we use the add instruction. In a high level language, it is like assigning go to x and then writing the instruction x equals x plus 100 naturally. Once the sum is done and left in register x for its return, we proceed to write the exit code with the value 93 in x8 and the svc0 call explicitly. Now we execute the program via the script ADLDEC, so that echo prints the return value, which prints the value 100 as was expected clearly. To solve example 15, we declare in the data section a variable named A of type word with the values negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 grouped. We load the address of a into x with ld for carefully, then we load the content of position th into x1, being a at position th, then x2 with an offset of 4, being the array a at position 1, then into register x3 we load from x0 with an offset of 8 smoothly, being the array a at position 2, then we add them. We use the add instruction to add x1 and x2, and we leave the result in x, then we add x and x3, and we leave it in x again. Then we negate x with NED. Then we write the exit code, and the sum was left in the return value x properly. We execute the program with the script and we get the value 6 as the result. This has been all for this video. If you liked it, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and activate the notifications always. Until the next video.